unceremoniously sacked and there's no denying it and the BCCI has not handled the situation well. Please go ahead. Yes, so I was saying it is extremely unfortunate, Aarti, uh, of the way things have unfolded. Look, uh, the BCCI in its right have absolutely every rights to, to, to bring in a new captain. Uh, if uh, Virat Kohli announced his exit uh, from the T20 captaincy much before uh, the World Cup, uh, India's performance at the World Cup uh, left a lot to be desired. The BCCI and the selectors have every right to say, look, we will not have Virat continuing in, you know, in the shorter formats of the game, which is the T20 and the ODIs. So they have every right to go to Virat and say, uh, Mr. Kohli, you've not done well. We'd like to bring in a change. We'd like to bring in a guy who's been you know, fairly successful uh, from his franchisee side uh, in the IPL. And we'd like to bring him into the ODI uh, fold as well as the captain. Now, Virat Kohli, the captain, is very different from Virat Kohli, the batsman. He's still one of the most feared batsmen in the world. India needs him now more than ever. He's not had the best of uh, form in the last few years, yet he's, he's one of the best batsmen to have ever played the game both in the ODI format and the test format. You need, with the World Cups coming in, you want Virat Kohli to be firing all cylinders. So, what, what should have been done by the BCCI in an ideal scenario if what Virat Kohli says is true, and I do believe him, he, he, he's taken a lot of, uh, you know, uh, heat from, from, from the public and the media alike. He's come out very clear, very concise, uh, had a lot of clarity in what he was saying and handled the whole situation very well. Uh, so I do believe that this should have been handled well. He should have been informed much in advance if the BCCI think tank did believe that the shorter format, both the ODI as well as the uh, the T20 captaincy, uh, you know, did not need to rest with Virat. Virat said that I have... I had very categorically said I want to continue as the uh, as the captain in the ODI format. If they did not agree with me then or after the World Cup or when the uh, you know when the announcement was made, uh, I should have been told. And I think he deserves this kind of respect, Arti. I think that's the minimum that uh, the captain of the Indian national cricket team deserves, which he hasn't. Uh, it's not been handled well. Now let's see uh, from here on how things can be uh, course corrected. Uh, Nikhil, stay with us. Also, Mikhail Vaswani, sports journalist, joining us. Uh, Mikhail, good afternoon. Thanks so much for speaking to Mirror now. You know, when Virat announced his resignation as T20 captain, but not ODI captain, there were several eyebrows raised about, uh, you know, he was supposed to be relinquishing captaincy from white ball cricket in his entirety. Uh, and there was some questions about whether he had made the right choice. But nevertheless, the manner in which this is handled, the manner in which he's not just been nudged out, but probably been shoved out, uh, is rather embarrassing for the BCCI with him having actually very openly spoken about it. Hi, Arati. You know, firstly, let's put some perspective into it. When Virat Kohli decided to step down from as captain of the T20 uh, side, there was an entire process involved with it because he sat with the board, he explained the concerns, he spoke about, you know, too much uh, workload on him, and the BCCI appreciated his decision, called it very progressive. There was a process involved in the entire passing of the baton. Now, my point is the BCCI has never been great communicators. And remember one thing, in 2005, when Saurabh Ganguly was removed from captaincy, it was a similar kind of situation. At that time, even Rahul Dravid was in the epicenter of action because that was then being handed over to Dravid with Great Chapel being portrayed as a villain. Now, with Saurabh Ganguly having gone through all of this, you would expect him to maybe take some more a more better stance, be a better communicator while fronting the BCCI. And with Dravid also in the picture, you would want them to dull the situation and not really want Virat Kohli, just before leaving for South Africa for a big test series, come and speak all of this. I strongly believe the BCCI maybe over here may have got it a little wrong in communicating things and they could have handled the situation much better. 1.5 hours into the selection of the test team, if you are being told that you're not captain the ODI side, this is not the right way. It's like you're telling somebody, I'm not, you're not invited for a party. That's how trivialized you made the situation of Virat Kohli's captaincy in the ODI format. So I strongly believe that with Dada at the helm, you'd expect more accountability in such situations and you don't want another Bollywood kind of a you know, uh, uh, being unfolded in front of the fans. Listen, because today the BCCI is not able to communicate in the right way, 
sources come into play, reports come into play because there is someone always giving some kind of input from within the BCCI office. There is more than what meets the eye over here when it comes to what the relationship right now is between Rohit and Virat. But interestingly, what it remains to be seen is how poorly, once again, the BCCI has handled this situation. Yeah, Nikhil, uh, and Mikhail, of course, mentioned the presence of both Saurav Ganguly, both Rahul Dravid in this entire, uh, in the current setup in the Indian cricket team. Interestingly, just a few days ago when Saurav Ganguly was asked about this, he said that he had requested uh, Virat Kohli to not give up T20 captaincy, to not relinquish that post. Again, adding further wheels within wheels to this entire uh, captaincy debacle. Well, uh, you know, it's it's Virat's personal decision. Uh, it's quite possible that because Ravi Shastri was also leaving uh, the T20, uh, you know, the Indian coaching setup, Virat had a great relationship with him. Virat would have also realized that T20, you know, if you ask Virat Kohli, what is your favorite format of cricket? The, there is unanimous choice that he would he would pick test cricket. So I, I do believe there's uh, he wanted to focus on his test cricket. He is a, a fantastic uh, batsman, his record uh, speaks for himself or for themselves rather. As far as ODI is concerned, so out of the three formats, if he had to kind of relinquish uh, one uh, out of all the three, he would have picked uh, uh, T20, which is what he wanted to kind of bring his load down as a captain and focus on his batting. Uh, you know, he's not had the best of time in the last couple of years as far as his batting is concerned as well. So I would believe that, you know, it was a well thought of decision from Virat Sen. It was communicated well. Yes, uh, Saurav Ganguly would have spoken to him and said, look, we, you know, maybe it's also related to the timing that let's not announce it now. Let's announce it after the World Cup gets over. Uh, you know, it will give, uh, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of speculation centered around you, the BCCI, the cricket, and it's not good. Uh, for a World Cup that's actually hosted by the BCCI. That could have been a reason as well, speculative. Uh, I do believe that uh, Virat's decision of stepping down is his personal. He wanted to take take a break, take, um, you know, take some load off his shoulders, and BCCI should have respected it. I also think the, the selectors and the BCCI have full right to decide that we want to hand over the baton of the ODI captaincy along with the T20 to Rohit Sharma. They are well within their right. I just think the manner in which it was done was, was, uh, was not good. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I just feel that is a big problem in the whole conversation. It's it's just the quorum, and it's not, you know, we talk about people being professional. You can pick up the phone and inform somebody, well, you're not going to be the captain. Understandable because it's we are we are professionals. We expect the the utmost level of professionalism from every athlete that plays for the Indian national team. However, given what Virat's given to the national team, where it's he's taken him, I think uh, you know for for the betterment of the sport, communication and uh, you know Mikhail mentions it absolutely spot on. It was very critical that this was handled with care. It has not been. It's been a bane uh, with sport, with cricket in, in the country that, you know, we cannot handle some of these more sensitive things uh, better. So, yes, it's, uh, you know, it's it's now put wheels on to, to a story which, which, uh, which we hoped it would not because, you know, we have a test match coming up, a test series, a critical test series. It's not going to be easy for India and South Africa. And now it will, it will um, you know, make it uh, even more difficult for the Indian setup. Yes, uh, certainly, Nikhil, of course, is also in stark contrast to the fact that when he was relinquishing the T20 captaincy, in a long statement, Virat had said that he had a discussion with Jay Shah, with Saurav Ganguly, with Ravi Shastri. Uh, but here, clearly, there was no conversation at all. Uh, Mikhail, just before we wrap up, uh, last question, of course, this press conference everybody was talking about because there were several questions of a Rohit Sharma versus uh, Virat Kohli rift. In fact, that was supposed to be the main headline of this press conference. Virat has given us a new one. Uh, but again, he has reiterated that there is nothing wrong between the two of them, all is well, something that he, Rohit, the BCCI have been doing for a while now. A, do you buy that? And B, do you think this entire controversy, the one preceding it, in some way, perhaps not in the performance, but per perhaps in their body language and their interaction, uh, will play out in this ODI series, which Virat has now said he's going to participate in? See, we've seen uh, internal risk in, in players of other teams as well. For the longest time, Adam Gilchrist, Shane Vaughan never spoke to each other, but it never showed on the field. And I guess today in professional cricket and professional sport with such matured individuals, 
I, I don't think so it will have, have an adverse effect. But you get the impression that it's a fragmented dressing room at times. But I'm so happy that we have Rahul Dravid over there today to actually go and mentor, monitor and ensure the situation does not go out of hand. But I strongly believe both these gentlemen need to sit with the bosses of BCCI and they need to be explained that there's nothing above Indian cricket at the moment. And Indian cricket, who I feel at this point is in a place of misplaced priorities, need to come together once again. There's a lot that's happening around Indian cricket within the team, within the management and all of it. But if they can be re reminded that nobody is indispensable in life and sport, then maybe we could be finding a breakthrough over here. Because at the end of the day, Indian cricket is suffering largely. A lot of talent is, is being missed out. The selection process and policies are being questioned. So all of that has to be nipped from the bud so that Indian cricket now prepares itself for the big marquee ICC events and also gives it a, a good shot where they can go on to win a tournament this time around. And it all begins with a very healthy uh, dressing room not with press conferences saying that we are all good and we are doing good. They need to show it in the middle with great camaraderie and teamwork. Okay, Mikhail, Nikhil, thank you so much for speaking to Mirana. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, perhaps there is no doubt of whether there is a rift, there is a no rift. I think the one thing that uh, nobody can claim is the fact that both Virat and Rohit are completely dedicated to the team and the team's success. We're going to slip into a short break now, but stay tuned. We have plenty on the other side.